Hi. <laughs> today is February 28th today, and I am reviewing Dynamite episode for February 26th, the Go Home episode for AEW Revolution, which, according to Cody, is going to be AEW's WrestleMania. Yeah, it will. I can I can see it being that high. I mean, all out last year garnered like 165,000 uh, people requesting tickets, and I think they confirmed that like 127 was individual people. So that's going to be very interesting. And anyway, to make it even more interesting, we're going to review the go home episode for that pay per view. Now, I know that it's annoying having to go into the video description to find the match summaries that I'm reading, but I have been searching and searching and searching. I cannot figure out how to get a video editor for Chrome where I can simply put, like, a square or of with words in it or just words on the screen and make them come up at a certain time make them disappear at a certain time so that way it'll just be on the screen with me while I'm reading it and then go away after I'm done reading it I've been trying to figure that out whole like if you have help for a Google Chromebook Lenovo Google Chromebook is what I bought a few months ago like definitely help me me oh Anyway, anyway, let's get into the first match, the 30-minute Iron Man match between Kenny Omega and Hangman, uh, no, sorry, between Kenny Omega and Pac, the bastard Pac. So, man, oh man, oh man. Pac is a brutal wrestler, brutal, brutal. I think that he is not really going for... I mean, he wants to win championships, but I think he's also equally satisfied with getting certain recognitions like Match of the Year or Wrestler of the Year or, you know what I mean, such stuff like that. Like, I'm surprised. Like, I think there's Match of the Year, and that takes into account storyline and build-up and people's investment and stuff. That makes sense. But there should also I think there should also be another... Award of the Year called uh, Most Physical Match of the Year. And 30-Minute Iron Man match is fine. AEW's 30-Minute Iron Man match, that is awesome. That would definitely qualify. But anyway, getting down to the match, uh, the maneuvers. I'm going to list the, the big moves each wrestler did. Then we're going to give a little summary. And then, once I'm done reading the summary I have written for ProWrestlingReviews.com, then we're going to get into the match. So, the new maneuvers, Pac did a brain buster to Kenny Omega off the top ropes. He double drop kicked Kenny when he jumped off the top ropes and uh, nailed Kenny Omega with it. Pac also did a black arrow, a falcon arrow off the ring apron uh, to the floor outside the ring. While Kenny Omega did a Tiger Driver 98, a flying big kick, like he came at Pac and he kicked Pac and Pac just flew right back into the turnbuckle, man, and landed on his ass. Like that was really, it was really, really cool looking and it totally looked like Pac was sent flying. Like it did not look like he jumped back at all. It was really cool. Uh, and then Hurricane Rana. Uh, standing Hurricane Rana, like, just on, like, in the ring, not outside the ring, not on the turnbuckles or anything, just the Hurricane Rana in the ring. It was really good. Three consecutive eight triggers. He also did a one-wing angel, and that's the move that helped him finish it off. The written summary, this was the most intense match of 2020, no question. Pac has always had phenomenal matches, such as the matches he's had with Hangman Page, including the pre-Double or Nothing 2019 match. And Kenny Omega, the all-out pay-per-view match he had with Pac, and then that crazy singles match they had, I think it was on November 27th, I think, yeah. And then now, the 30-minute Iron Man match. This was so brutal and intense from start to finish. Both were excellent. Nothing to say. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. This match was insane. Totally insane. If I was uh, uh, Tony Khan, I would say, listen, Pac, you are the initiation for wrestlers who 
get their popularity up. They get their popularity up They're with the fans and everything else. But in AEW, you also have to be able to perform. So you are the guy that people have to wrestle. Now, the thing is, whether who wins, like if Pac wins or the wrestler wins, that's... That can be decided by the bookers. But what I'm saying is that Pac is the bastard. Pac is so good. He's just so good. Everybody boos him. Not because he sucks. Nobody can say he sucks in the ring. He is phenomenal. Holy God, he is so great. He should be the initiation. Like, if you're in AEW and you sell and the fans like you, you also have to prove that you're physical and you can take a good match. And Pac should be the one that you have to wrestle for that. Like, oh man, and Kenny Omega was crazy in this match too, man. He was psychotic. Like, he, it's so off-putting because, like, Pac is so intense. Like, just so angry and intense and conniving, right? And, he, he, like, he reminds me of Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero's, like, attitude, lie, cheat, and steal, like, put together. But the thing is, what I said is so off-putting is that Kenny Omega looked almost as more more intense than Pac did. He just looked crazed. He looked crazed and he looked determined. Man, I cannot believe he took that Falcon Arrow off the ring apron to the floor. Like, it is really crazy. That was crazy. Holy God. I can't, I can't say... Anything negative about this match at all, man. Even if you don't like Pac, there's no way that you could take away his in-ring te uh, technical ability. There's no way you could say Kenny Omega is not good in singles anymore. He won this match. And he just uh, he managed to keep his endurance high enough to use his strength just one move longer than Pac. And I don't know why they agreed to do this match like three days before the pay-per-view. Like, Three days before Revolution, when Kenny Omega and Hangman Page go against the Young Bucks for the tag titles in Chicago in the Wintrust Arena in the city limits of Chicago proper. Before that, three days before that, he agrees to do a 30-minute Iron Man match with Pac, the bastard, and they just... Pac did a moonsault... No, uh, uh, he, he... I think it's a flipping moonsault. I don't really know what to call it. A front flip splash off the top ropes to Kenny Omega through a table. <laughs> yeah, it was a great match. You should definitely watch this one. And then number two was Jurassic Express versus Inner Circle. Don't know who won. Not going to review that match. I'm fucking sick of six-man tag matches. There's no division for it. There's no championship for it. I'm not reviewing that. Number three, Best Friends versus Butcher and Blade. Like, I, I like Best Friends more than I like Private Party. Def, def, like, totally, definitely. Uh, I, I like Best Friends uh, more than the Lucha Brothers. I thought the Lucha Brothers were really great, but they're in the ring and they're constantly doing, like, the taking off the glove and throwing at them thing, and this Zero Miero. And like, oh yeah, we have zero fear. All these guys have zero fear. Have you seen the matches AEW puts on? Like, whether you like it or you don't like it, you can't say they're not physical. And a lot of moves are getting nailed, like finished, like in good form. Like, the technicianship of these matches are is great. Like, of each move, it's execution. But, uh, but the best friends right now or I think one of the better tag teams, which is why they've been winning. And then they went against the Butcher and the Blade. I love the Butcher and the Blade. Those guys, they always come across as really physical. To me, they, they're like a cross between uh, the Dark Order and Kenny Omega and Hangman Page almost. Yeah. But anyway, in this match... They may be that as individual tag teams, but as far as moves go, Trent did a spear to Blade on the outside of the, the the ring, which they seem to set up the same way all the time, where he gets thrown into the corner and then he comes back with a vicious spear. I, to his credit, it's a crazy good spear from what I can see. Chuck Taylor, he did nothing great worth noting. 
that I can see. It might have happened during commercials. If it did, I apologize, but I just don't remember seeing him do any big move or any really good high spot like that turn of momentum in the match at all. Um, Blade, he did uh, like a running kick to... Uh, <coughs> To Trent's face. Then he did a jackknife plex. And then, you know, and then threw Trent onto the ropes, who bounced off the ropes and came back and landed on his back pretty good. Uh, the butcher did a, uh, like a running shoulder tackle, and it, like sent the guy running into the ropes and he came back. And then the butcher kind of went at him with his shoulder. The butcher was huge, so he shoulder tackled him pretty hard, actually. Mm. And then he did a hip toss suplex where he grabbed the guy like this and he came up and he kind of went like that and landed him on his back. I've seen that before. I can't remember what it's called. I, th I can only think of like a hip toss suplex. That's what the butcher did. The Trent did a spear to Blade. Chalk didn't really do anything worth noting. Blade did a running kick to Trent's face. Jackknife plex on Trent to the ropes who bounced back like landing on his back. Butcher did a running shoulder tackle. It was a hard one. And a hip toss suplex. It was a pretty boring match with Blade and Trent doing the vast majority of the offense. Butcher and Chuck mostly brawled. Nothing great worth noting. Not any, not, not even any submissions. Best friends nailed a strong zero to Blade to pick up the victory. Now, this match sucked. They're good teams. But they do not have any chemistry together at all. They don't. And I think they're really, really, really going to try to push. Uh, man, I think they're really, really, really going to push. Uh, the fact that they think these two uh, tag teams are going to can have good chemistry. And I say that because this match is happening at Revolution. <laughs> like you got Revolution, a huge ass pay-per-view. And you can make any match you want, really. And this kind of came out of nowhere. Now it's the best friends versus Butcher and Blade at Revolution. I don't know, man. I've seen but I, I, I'd like to see... Yeah... I mean, I'd like to see, like, Dark Order versus SCU again. I believe they've already had that match. But I would like to see that one. That would be really cool. That would be cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. They're trying to push the fact that they think these guys could have good chemistry by having this match at Revolution. Um, I'd rather see the uh, the Dark Order go against um, SCU. I'd like to see that match or again. Yeah, that that was uh, four out of ten. The uh, third match, Best Friends versus Butcher and Blade, was a four out of ten. And the best friends won by hitting their strong zero to, to Blade. And the last match they held in this episode was Shida versus Yuka Sakazaki versus Big Swole versus Shanna. Shida, Yuka, Big Swole, and Shanna in a four-way match. The match started off boring and sloppy with just punches and kicks and each competitor constantly rolling back out of the ring every time they were knocked down. However, the pace picked up with bigger and bigger moves being landed as the match went on. It really... It's, it's hard to pick out specific moves that each competitor did as the offense was back and forth with a lot of counters and reversals. Over Big Swole hit Shanna with her dirty dancing finisher then turned her attention to Yuka and Shida and got them down and went for the pinfall, but they kicked out, and immediately Yuka went to the apron to jump off the ropes back into the ring, but was nailed with a kick to the face, which finished her off, it seemed. And then Shida gained control somehow, I can't remember, on Big Swole, and then ended up perfect driving her onto Yuka, and then gave her the pin, and then scored the pinfall victory, and she improved her record by another win. 
the women's tag match, the women's matches are just number one. I like how they did not make this a fucking women's tag match. They made this a four way singles match. This is what they should have been doing all along. Even if the match itself sucks, at least you could say a specific person benefited somehow. When they increase wins and wins and losses in AEW matter, apparently every time you get a win that puts you in a better, that moves you ahead to get a world title shot. Even if the match sucks with a four-way, at least you could say you get that much out of it. Which, okay, you know what? Better than nothing. But, but... And which is what they had, which is great. I love it. This is awesome. That's the reason why it's going to get like five points right off the start. It gets, it passes just on that fact because I am so sick of women's tag matches. There's no women's tag division. There's no women's tag division. And then they're like, they have women's tag matches all the time. Nobody benefits. It's always just random mixings. So there's no team that's actually getting propelled forward. You know, and all those tag matches they had last year don't count anymore because the record is reset right now, right? Like your career stays there, but every year the wins and losses reset. So none of those matches that happened last year mattered. But it, it it gets I'd say it gets seven out of ten because there was towards the end there was some pretty I can't remember all of it but there was some pretty good back and forth offense like actual moves and stuff towards the end it wasn't it wasn't all bad I would say this match was a seven out of ten it wasn't all bad I I I hate Yuka Sakazaki I wish she would piss off. Same thing with Rio. But that's just my own opinion. I like Sheeta. She's good. Shanna has a lot. And Big Swole are really good too. I like Big Swole. She has like ability to fight gritty or brawl or like... It's almost like brawl style takedowns. And, and, and brawl style moves that throw you off your base and off your... Like, you know, it dazes you and stuff. She's She's got like... A really good brawl powerhouse kind of approach. I think that she could definitely develop that very well. And then after that, they had the weigh in, and it was just what you would expect. They weighed in uh, John Moxley. I can't remember what his weight was like, two, might have been 234 or something like that. Uh, and then they didn't, uh, Chris Jericho kept stepping on and off, and on and off the scale. So he never, they never did announce like how much he weighs. And then him and John Moxley ended up getting into a fight, of course. And then other wrestlers came down, I think. And then it just broke out and whatever. Um, but anyway, a 30-minute Iron Man match, a, a three-man tag, a six-man tag, which is fucking stupid and a waste of a match. And then a tag match, which is also going to happen again on the pay-per-view. I don't I'm going to have to watch that match again. I'm going to have to watch it again to see what like I could possibly get out of it. They must think it's going to be really great if they're going to put it on this pay-per-view. And they said this is their WrestleMania and this is their very first one, so they I guess they have a really good match uh, lined up. And then the women's four way with uh, Shida winning. Yeah. That was seven. Seven out of ten. It immediately passes because it was a four away rather than a tag. That's what it should have been from the very freaking beginning. Why don't you just make it a fatal four away with one of them winning? Like, I don't know if there's problems with ego in the AEW women's roster or what, but there's something going on. It's not just pure focus on who's more popular and, and storylines and what makes sense be, with the chemistry between the wrestlers and that. It doesn't feel like... Only now it's very first starting to feel like that but anyway that's my review of this dynamite please let me know how i did how i should change the format um when i went between from one match to another and how i did each match if they uh, just let me know how i did